What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek. And today we are talking about controls in Microsoft Flow, specifically condition controls. So we are gonna go through what a condition control is and give you a brief overview of what controls are in general. So we are in Microsoft Flow. We are going to add a new step after this send email step. Click new step and there is a button here that says control so if we click on control we actually get a list of all of these controls and i'm going to go through each of these in different videos today we are talking about conditions so i click on condition and this is what we get so a condition in a microsoft flow allows you to evaluate something and then depending on if it meets or does not meet that criteria, we can go down a yes or a no route. So what this allows you to do is add in logic um, and functions around doing uh, multiple different uh, branchings of actions. So we could have something like um, if a tweet contains a certain hashtag, then we want to alert our marketing team if a tweet does not contain a certain hashtag, we don't want to um, you know, alert our marketing team. So that's what this can do. So when I go through showing you how this works. So as I've added that control, we automatically get this yes and this no path down here. You can also notice that there are buttons to add actions inside of here. So you can add an action to do whatever you want um, in these steps. So essentially this, this if yes is the true statement and if no is the false statement in this logic. Now in the condition, we have this choose a value. You can also see this add button here and we'll get onto that in a second, but click on choose a value. And then again, we get the dynamic content or the expression window and we can put in details in here. So for instance, um, we can see that this is now, um, we can now uh, parse in information from the email body, or we can still look at this first trigger, which is this tweet. So we could have something like um, if name of the user, um, so that's the name of the, the person tweeting, um, if this is equal to something else. Now this middle bit, this operator, uh, we have a bunch of different options. So if we expand it, we can see we've got um, is equal to is the default, then we've got contains, does not contain, is equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, less than, or equal to, starts with, does not end with, etc, etc. Now if we, um, if we just click through uh, is equal to, um, on the other side we again have the dynamic content as well as expressions, but you can also put in just plain text in here as well. Um, so you can just put a string or a value in here that would um, be equal to something. So we could put where name equals Matt Collins Jones, for instance, or where you know Twitter handle equals this, or where um, email body contains you know X, Y, and Z, you know whatever it is you want. So we could add in where name equals name just for argument's sake. Now in this, um, we would go down this branch in logic, and because both of these are coming from the same place, where name is equal to name. The, it would evaluate this condition to be true and therefore we would go down the if yes uh, root or branch uh, in this flow and we would not go down the no branch. Um, if I put something in like, um, let's just add in just, just some random text, um, then uh, it would not equal this text and then you would go down the no route. So that's kind of the basics of conditions. Now we can add some additional logic into this. So that's where this add button comes from. So you click on the add and we have add row or add group. So adding a row will just add another row below the row we are looking at. So again, we can choose something like um, followers count, for instance. Um, and then again, we have this. Now, you'll actually notice that we have a few um, different options. This is because Microsoft Flow has detected that the follower count is a number 
and not a string like the full name is. So the full name we had is equal to, um, is, you know, we have, uh, is less than or equal to, contains, does not contain. These are all things that a string could potentially evaluate on. In this instance, follow account is going to be a number, so we don't have things like contains, for instance. So we could have follow account is equal to, less than, greater than. These are ones that are related to, um, to numbers, so integers, for instance. Now, this, there'll be a similar thing for date fields. So date fields um, would, wouldn't have contains, but may have sort of like on or after, on or before, for instance. So again, we can add stuff in here. So we could add follow account equals follow account, for instance, um, or does not equal as greater than or less than something. Now, um, what, you'll, what you'll see is that this, um, this button up top says and. So inherently, what this is trying to do is go, if this top, um, this top condition here evaluates to true, this bottom one also has to evaluate to true. Otherwise, we're going to go down the false route, the if no route. If um, both of them evaluate to true, then we're going to go down this if yes route. So we have power here to kind of say, um, does it need to match both of these? Do these both have to come back as true um, to go down the yes route? Or do we actually want one of them to evaluate as true? So if we click on the and, we have this or. So this is saying if name is equal to this, or if follow account is equal to this, go yes, else go no. So this is saying if neither of these are true, go no. But if just one of them is true, go yes. We also have the ability to add a group in. So if we click on add group, we can see that there is another branch of logic down here. So again, um, this allows for branching conditional logic. So we could have um, something up here that says these two have to evaluate to true, but um, we also have this condition down here and this, um, and we could have maybe a couple of conditions down here um, to do different things. So create it app, that's a good one, because now we'll have the um, uh, date and time stuff. Um, and then we could have something else down here, favorited. So what we could do is we could say, basically both of these groups of conditions need to evaluate it's true. So this one up here is saying this first line and this second line have to evaluate it's true, and one of these two lines has to evaluate it's true. That's because we have an or condition here, which is saying we just want one of these to evaluate it's true, to, to have this group be a true, as well as this group up here. Both of these things have to evaluate it's true to be a true. If I actually change this to a, an or, that would actually say, um, this first line could be true and would go down the if yes. Um, the second line could be true and would go down the if yes. Or um, either one of these could be true and we go down an if yes. Um, so this gives you a very powerful um, ability to manipulate and to put in checks and conditions to make sure your flow is activating and running the correct thing. And then based on if this evaluates to true or false, we go down the if yes or the if no routes. That's really, really powerful to make, to make sure we are doing the right thing. Um, hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you guys. Uh, if not, let me know in the comments down below. Um, have you been using the, uh, the conditional logic? Do you put this in, in a lot of your flows? Do you not use it? Let me know. I want to hear your, your ideas. Um, as always, please like this video, um, share it with all your friends, your grandmother, everyone, uh, and please think about subscribing to my channel. Thanks. Ciao for now.